Hello, uh, Zandam here. I just thought I would make some Dungeons & Dragons stuff for uh, newer players, seeing as though I've been running a couple of games and thought that it might be good for just new players to just kind of have something to go off of for making characters. In this video, I'm going to be making a barbarian character seeing as though that is, for the most part, one of the simplest classes that you can play in Dungeons & Dragons. So, let's get started. Uh, first off, whenever you're making a character, first thing that I like to do is to choose your class. You can choose your race first or your class first. I just like to choose my class first because the different races add certain bonuses that are better for some classes. So we are going to make Baron. Alright, so after you pick your class, uh, certain classes get certain bonuses for skills and the like. As you can see there is strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. As a Barbarian, the two most important stats in combat will be Constitution, which determines pretty much your maximum hit points, as well as how resistant you are to poison and the like, and Strength, which determines how well you are with uh, strength-based weapons like great swords, great axes, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, you have a couple of choices whenever you're going into a Barbarian. You could do any race that you like, but you get bonuses if on those stats if you are playing as a human, because humans get plus ones to all their stats. A half-orc, because they get uh, bonuses to strength and constitution. And dwarves, because they also get bonuses to... Uh, like constitution. I don't believe they get any strength bonuses, but yeah. Uh, for the purposes of this character, I will be making a half orc. Half orcs can be very interesting characters to play, mostly because they are, for the most part, shunned in. Uh, more or less uh, civilized areas like cities and the like. People are kind of scared of them because they seem a lot more savage. So it can be a really fun character to play as. And for starting characters, uh, it's also quite nice because you don't really have to role play that much as a half orc because you're just really the guy who's uncomfortable in city environments, seeing as though most half orcs grow up in the countryside or they grow up in orcish tribes. Alright, so as a half-orc you get a plus two to your strength and a plus one to your constitution. So uh, let's now determine our stats. I'm mostly just going to be using the standard stat array. That means that uh, you pretty much have a certain amount of numbers to pick from. I'll just put them here for now. Uh, you have a 15, a 15, a 14, a 13, a 12, a 10, and an 8. And you can put these numbers into any stats that you like, uh, and then they are uh, receive bonuses from your racial bonus. So. To make the most balanced sort of barbarian character, I'm going to make my highest stat constitution. That'll mean that I this character will be extremely tough, very hard to kill. So that's a 15, and then you get the plus one from your racial bonus. So you get 16. For strength, I'm also going to make it 16 by making it 14 plus the two from the half-orc racial bonus. Alright, so we have our two most important stats picked out. Uh, they're very high. This means you'll be getting a 
plus three to all of your strength and all of your constitution rolls, which is a very good thing. If you check on page uh, 13, it provides uh, pretty much a description of what bonuses or negatives you get on all of your stats for having certain stats. Because those are 16s, you get a plus 3. 14s and 15s are plus 2. 12s, 13s are plus 1. 10s and 11s are plus 0. And below that you get negatives. So, our next most important stat, I would probably say, is dexterity. Because dexterity uh, determines how quick you are at like, avoiding attacks and the like. It also means that you're going to be more coordinated as a character. So I'll put 13 into dexterity. And that 13 gives a plus one. Next, uh, after this, it doesn't really matter all too much. Uh, intelligence provides certain bonuses whenever you're trying to do uh, arcane type of stuff, like knowing things like history, things about nature, like what certain plants are, things about certain religions. Uh, I think I'm going to put the 12 into wisdom because I'm going to pretty much just say this character has lived out in the wild for a good while. So they probably know a good bit about animal handling and all that kind of stuff. And that gives a plus one for that. Uh, I'll put the 10 into Charisma, say, because, yeah, why not make him some Charismatic and give him an 8 in Intelligence. So that means that is a minus 1 for Intelligence rolls. Like, this guy isn't very smart at all, at least book smarts, uh, and... There are no bonuses and no negatives for charisma checks. So that's pretty much all the stats worked out uh, with all this kind of stuff. And now we will go on to the racial features and traits. As a half-orc, you get certain bonuses. Uh, let's see here. The first bonus that you get as a half-orc is you have dark vision. I misspelled that. Okay, apparently this program doesn't like that. All right, so dark vision uh, lets you see, can see up to 60 feet in dim light at disadvantage for bright light. This is useful because it pretty much lets you see 60 feet further. Uh, keep this in mind that 5 feet is one space, so that means you're going to see quite a bit further. It also means that in darkness, in darkness, you can see up to 60 feet as if it were dim light. So this means that even if it's completely dark, your character can see a bit. If you are in dim light, that means that you have disadvantage on all of your uh, perception checks. So don't expect that to really be too, too helpful in just completely lightless environments. Alright, as our next racial bonus, we get menacing. Because half-orcs are very scary looking. This means you are proficient in intimidation. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah. All right. So our next racial bonus, which is extremely fun as a uh, barbarian, is uh, relentless endurance. Relentless Endurance is a very fun skill because it means that if you are hit with an attack that lowers your HP to zero or below, you can decide to make it drop you to 1 HP instead once per long rest. So this means uh, once every like long rest, which is effectively an 8 hour rest, your character can pretty much resist going unconscious once. This can be really fun because it's just Oh, why is D going down? You're, you know, it just adds on to you being a massive tank of a creature. Uh, also, uh, this does not work if you are instantly killed. Yeah, so be careful with it though, because if a massive dragon decides to swoop down, uh, and breathes fire on you and then claws at you, you are still going to be in danger because you might just instantly be killed. Alright, uh, since we're kind of running out of space here, uh, I'm going to be going on to the next page, which uh, allows me to list additional features and traits. Uh, the next racial trait and the last racial trait is Savage Attacks means on critical strikes you deal an extra weapon die of damage. So this is really nice of an ability because it's pretty much whenever you roll a critical strike, which is rolling a 20, you instead of doing times 2 damage, you deal times 3 because uh, critical strikes you roll an extra weapon die as a half orc you get to roll three die it's rather effective and quite fun at times uh, let's see here as an orc you also know common language and orcish alright uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. As a half orc, you also have a speed of 30 feet, which means you can move 6 feet every turn. Alright. So now that we're done with all the uh, racial bonuses and the like, now we move on to the barbarian abilities and the like. So, as a barbarian, your base hit points at first level. Yes, we are starting at first level. Uh, are you start off with 12 hit points plus your constitution modifier. This plus 3 here is my constitution modifier. So that means that I start off with 15 hit points. Which is quite a lot considering wizards can start off with as low as 5 or 6 hit points. So this means you're going to be take, able to take quite a few hits uh, as the Barbarian. Let's see here. Uh, as a Barbarian, you also start off with a 1, 1 d 12. And if you're wondering what these hit die are, uh, pretty much during a short rest, which is considered a 15 to 30 minute break for your character in game, you can spend these hit die and roll one to recover hit points. So that means you can recover up to 
12 hit points and these hit point these hit die recharge after every long rest so don't be shy about using them because they're quite helpful at just recovering health especially if you don't have a cleric or some other form of healer on the party so let's move on to the next portion as a barbarian we have a bonus on saving throws for uh, strength and constitution. Alright, what does uh, having this do? This means you get a plus two on all your saving throws. And the saving throws are normally just your modifier, but if you're proficient with it, you get a plus two. So this means on all saving throws for strength and constitution you will get a plus five these saving throws would be made like for example you would make a constitution saving throw whenever something poisonous bites you or something so a plus five is quite a large bonus especially at first level uh... let's see here now let's move on to proficiencies so, as a barbarian, you are proficient with light armor, medium armor, simple weapons, and martial weapons. This means that your character can wear light armors, medium armors, like uh, certain forms of chainmail and the like. You can use simple weapons like clubs and axes, and martial weapons like great swords and great axes. So this means that you are pretty much able to use any melee weapon in the entire game, and you can wear most armors. But barbarians get certain bonuses, which means, which will mean that you won't really want armor. Uh, let's move on to that. Well, let's do the skills first. So as a barbarian you can choose two of the following skills to be proficient in animal handling athletics intimidation nature perception and survival as a half orc you are already proficient in intimidation so let's choose two more uh... you can pretty much just choose these to fit your character if they're a barbarian that has pretty much just been off in the wilds hunting down animals and stuff for a very long time uh... maybe they are proficient in nature or something you can just add little things just to make it more fun i'm going to make my character proficient in survival which pretty much means being able to uh... survive in dangerous environments uh... knowing what you have to do say if you're in a tundra or something uh, and I will also be proficient in say athletics so for all these skill checks you pretty much deal with your ability modifier unless you are proficient in it in which case you add a 2 so that means athletics is a plus 5 uh, survival is a plus 3 and intimidation is a plus two. Uh, I'm not going to be just. Fi I'm just not going to fill any of these out because if it's blank, uh, that just means refer to the ability modifier. That's the way I do it, just because it makes things a bit faster. Uh, let's move on to the barbarian abilities. So, as a barbarian, you have some of these features. Let's see here. The first one is unarmored defense. So as a barbarian, you will have a high armor class, which means it will be difficult to hit you. Uh, even if you uh, aren't wearing armor, because your armor class armor class is equal to 
10 plus dexterity modifier plus constitution modifier. So that means that this character's armor class is equal to 10 plus 1 plus 3. So 14. Let's go fill that in now. A 14 is a pretty solid armor class for a starting character. Uh, it's pretty much on par with uh, a fighter wearing some medium armor or a rogue who's wearing lighter armor with uh, and has high dexterity. So you'll pretty much be on par with armor class even though you're not going to be wearing any armor, which is quite good really. And at later levels you'll be able to raise your dexterity and your constitution, so you'll raise your armor class further. Next, let's go to the last ability for uh, first level barbarians, which is Rage. Rage is quite fun. Uh, at first level you can use it two times a day, so I like to put a little counter there. Rage means that uh, you gain advantage on all strength checks and ability. ability. Yeah. All strength checks and saving throws. It also means that you gain bonus damage to all strength based attacks equal to the bonus on the chart. At first level, that is a plus uh, two, I believe. Yeah. So this means that all your attacks made with strength weapons, like your axes and the like, will deal two more damage. And raging also means you have resistance versus slashing, piercing, and blood damages. This means that you half all incoming damage coming from uh, slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning weapons. So that means you half all damage incoming from swords, arrows, clubs, anything of the like. Uh, it still doesn't help you too too much against magic, so you're gonna have to be careful around magic users. And Rage lasts for up to one minute. Alright, and one minute in combat is ten rounds, because one round is six seconds. Or so it says in the book, your dungeon master might say differently, but it lasts up to one minute. Alright. So now that we've got all of those out of the way, now let's pick equipment for our character. Uh, as a barbarian, you can start off with a great axe or any martial melee weapon. So that gives you a quite a lot of leeway. Uh, great axes deal one 12 sided die worth of damage, which is quite respectable. But you could also start off with a great sword, which deals two six sided die, which is inherently better because you are dealing uh, uh, a minimum of two damage, and you're more likely to deal more damage because you're rolling the two die. So let's just start this character off with a great sword because it says any martial melee weapon. 
your dungeon master might say differently because the great sword is the best starting weapon that is non-magical but it can be quite fun to use simply just due to the massive amounts of damage you're going to be dealing all right uh, the next item that it says you are carrying is two hand axes or any simple weapon uh, I like to take just the hand axes because it's just easier and uh, hand axes are nice just because they deal a d6 of damage which is on par with pretty much any other uh, weapons that are simple melee weapons except for the great club which is a two-handed weapon the hand axe is throwable so you can throw these axes which is quite nice so I'll just take these two hand axes and it also says you have four javelins and X Explorer's pack. Now, what exactly is in this Explorer's pack? Uh, for that, we have to go to page 151, whereupon it says the Explorer's pack carries, or it contains a backpack that everything is in. It has a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinder box for starting the fires, ten torches, ten days rations for one person, obviously, a water skin, and 50 feet of hemp rope. Ah, as well as uh, 10 gold coins. So, you pretty much start off with everything your character possibly could need. You start off with weapons, food, some basic tools, some torches, and sleeping and eating equipment. So that's quite nice. And you start off with 10 gold coins, which, while not worth too, too much, still enough to go into town and buy a few things before you head off on your first adventure. All right. So after we've determined all of this stuff, next we need to come up with a character background. The background is important because it also adds more gear to your character and can be a good inspiration for your character's actual backstory. So for this character, uh, I think I'll go with the hermit background. I'll just have this character uh, be in a story where he was in an orc tribe where he grew up and he eventually ran away after he took part in like his first uh, raid with the orc tribe he killed a person he felt absolutely horrible about it ran off and became a hermit because none of the local towns would pretty much accept him because he was a half orc so a hermit uh let's see here as a hermit you have proficiency in medicine and religion I don't know how that got there. Why is it that medicine and investigation are linked? Uh, something about the link that uh, Wizard of the Coast provided is off. Whatever. Plus three. Yeah, those are linked for some reason. Just ignore that investigation is highlighted. Uh, and religion. So that means it will be a plus one for religion. Uh, da, 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 da. This means, as a hermit, you are proficient with herbs. 
what it is in kits. So this means that your character could possibly forage for herbs that can be used for making healing potions or salves that are useful just for helping your people out and you've got enough stuff to make some basic potions. Uh, let's see here. You also are proficient in one more language. I'll say since this guy has been living with an orc tribe for a while, let's say he's proficient with goblin. Because orcs and goblins, they uh, interact somewhat. Not too often, but they do somewhat. Uh, let's see here. And as a bonus for the hermit, you also start with uh, some bonus equipment. Uh, scroll case of notes. You can determine in your backstory what's in these notes and pretty much just make it your own. Uh, let's see here. It also contains a winter blanket for all those cold nights. Common clothes, which will be nice because your character will actually have something to wear since he doesn't have any armor or she. Uh, Herbalism kit. So that means you have a mortal and pestle, a mortar and pestle, as well as various other things for making uh, potions or just grinding up herbs and the like. And you start with another five gold coins. So that means you will start with 15 gold coins and all this equipment here. Uh, let's see here move on to these attacks and spell casting things. Uh, let's see here. Great sword. With your great sword, it is a strength based weapon. So you will get a plus ah before we get onto this proficiency bonus, first level, if you're proficient with a weapon, you get a plus two on your attacks. If you're proficient with all of the weapons you're carrying. So you get plus five because it's strength based and it deals 2d6 plus 3 slashing the plus 3 is from your strength check you add uh, strength to your melee attacks if they are strength based weapons if the weapon has finesse written next to it like it's a rapier or something that means you add your dexterity bonus uh, and for spells and the like, you don't add any bonus. So it doesn't really matter here because this isn't a spell casting class. You also have your hand axes and your javelins. Because these are also strength based weapons, it will be a plus five for all of them. And the hand axe deals 1d6 plus three. I believe the X's deal slashing damage. Yes, they do. And the javelins deal 1d6 plus three piercing damage. Now, it's nice to have certain different damage types because certain enemies have resistances to some types of damages. So say something has an extremely tough hide or a monster has an extremely tough hide, slashing damage might not be as effective against it so it would have resistance. And resistance uh, reduces how much damage it takes from that source by half. So it would mean that your sword would be very ineffective. So in that case you would pull out your javelins or something, stab at it. You don't have to throw it. You can use all these things in melee with, but you can still just attack in melee with these because the javelin is still a small spear, the hand axe is still a small axe, etc., etc. 
Uh, now to finish filling all of this stuff out, for initiative, you add your dexterity bonus. So you get a plus one on initiative, which determines your character's turn order in combat. Useful. All right. Uh, I'm just going to leave this backstory stuff uh, out for now, because this is just uh, the basics of making a character. Uh, if you want, you can draw your character in this box after you print it. Uh, it also has just various describers on the second page for your character's age, how tall they are, how heavy they are, color their hair is, skin color, eye color, all that kind of stuff. And that's pretty much it for making a barbarian. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be making some more in the future just to help out my friends. Uh, leave any feedback if you think I've done anything wrong or if you think I should change something and have a nice day.